React is amazing for many things, but one thing it's bad at out of the box is forms. So when we go to build a form in React, we spend most of the time working around its limitations and doing things like preventing default behavior instead of embracing it. So today we're gonna to take a look at how you might typically construct a form in React, and then we're gonna convert it to using React hook form library instead, and try and explain to you why using something like React hook form library or another similar form library in React is a much better idea than just doing it yourself. Okay, so for the purposes of this demonstration, I've set up a React app using Vite, and I'll link a couple of videos below about Vite if you wanna learn more about that. Um, but this is a very simple app. I've set up two uh, components here. One is the main app file, and the second one here you can see is user form. So I import user form into app. I have a, an example uh, user already set up with some information. Um, and I am then, I have a handle save, which basically console logs out the values I'm gonna send back. And then here I'm just rendering the form, passing down on save and passing down the user value. So if we have a look inside uh, the user form, we'll just have a quick look and see what that looks like in the app. So here you can see we have um, React forms, we have the name, email, website, and country values with a couple of drop downs. Um, so if we look at the code we have here, we have the user form, we have user data, so we're taking the initial user, which might come from the API, and we're setting that in state. So that becomes user data. Uh, we have some errors here that we are also using setting in state, and that's, a, that's initialized with an empty object. Um, so we're taking the user data, which if it doesn't exist, is an empty object as a default, and we're gonna destructure name, email, and website from that. Uh, we can also do uh, country and save ourselves some boilerplate down here. So uh, we then have a validate data function. So we have the errors object, and then we're gonna validate if the name doesn't exist, we're gonna validate using the validator library um, email. And if email is uh, not an email, uh, we're gonna say a valid email is required. And again, the website, if it's not a valid URL, we're gonna validate that as well. We then have a handle change function, which takes an event. And inside that event, we have event.target, and we take the name and the value off of that. We then set the user data using this previous data that the, the, using this callback that uh, set state takes. And we're gonna spread the previous data and just replace the name and value that we've changed. So we also have handle select change, which is a different uh, change handler for the select itself. We then have a handle save function. So the handle save function validates all the data. So that's where that validation gets called. So then here we check if there are any errors and if there are, we set them in state and then we return. So we're not gonna continue um, saving the form if there are validation errors. Um, if we've gotten this far, we can reset the errors to an empty object and we will call on save uh, user data, which then passes that back up into this handle save. So then we get down to the form and we've got, um, this is just a very rudimentary form put together real quick, but we have like a label name, we have an input with name of name, value of name, on change, handle change. So each of these has a name, a value, and the same on change. Then we looked at the select component, and you can see that has a value, which we gotta take off the uh, country options object. You can see that has its own on change, and this is where we pass in the object of uh, country options. And these are up here, defined up there. Um, so I'll show you real quick how that works. So we take a look at, I wanna change the name here to Thor, and we'll say Thor at marvel.com, change his website to thor.com, change the country to Asgard, and if I click save, we're getting this console log value out. We've logged it in two places. So we've logged it in the user form, and then up in the app, we're also logged in the values. So at this point, we would then take these values that we have saved from the form, and we would send it to the API. So that's totally fine, right? But if your form starts to become more complicated, a uh, simple form like this is totally fine, but if your form starts to become a lot more complicated, has different conditionals, has different validation requirements, then this whole thing becomes a lot more complex. So to solve that, we're gonna convert this form to using React hook form. So this is a library that we actually use at work, and it has saved us so much boilerplate, and so many headaches with these validation hoops that you're jumping through, and I think it's a really well thought out library. So we're gonna to go to the documentation here, and I uh, will click on get started. And basically we just wanna copy this install React hook form. So command J to open up the terminal here and I'm gonna stop the server, paste that in. 
npm run dev. Start the server again. Command J to close that. And what I'm going to do instead, and what I want to do here is import use form from React hook form. And we will start by showing you what is in the use form hook. So I'm going to say const uh, use, well, I can't call that use form, I'll call that uh, R I'll call it RHF for React hook form, equals use form, call that. And I'm just going to console log this out real quick so you can have a look. So we'll go back here. And inside of here, we have the React hook form uh, methods. So we'll open up this object and you've got a whole bunch of methods that come with the React hook form use form hook. Uh, so inside here, there's going to be a lot of stuff that we don't need for this demonstration. Um, but some stuff that we will use. So inside here, you've got something like, you've got clear errors, which you can imagine is going to clear the errors. You've got control, which allows you to control the actions of a change handler a little bit um, more tightly. So I'll show you that with the select component that we have. We have form state, which holds things like errors, and it tells you if the form is dirty or not. So that's something that you don't need to calculate yourself and figure out if the form has changed. Um, you have some booleans here, like is submitted and is submitting, is valid, is validating. All that stuff is super useful. Um, get field state, get values. This is how we get the form values. Uh, register is something we're definitely going to use in this in this demonstration. Um, we can set focus uh, of an input, so we don't need to mess around with refs to actually focus an input on um, component uh, mount, for example. Um, trigger is a function that triggers validation uh, manually. Uh, which you don't need to do in this example, but there might be cases where you might want to trigger some validation based on something else happening. Um, so let's take a look and see how this will actually work for our form. So instead of returning everything, I'm going to destructure the things that I need. So I'm going to start by destructuring register and control. Delete this. And I'm going to delete this other console log down here. Now, the next thing we need to do is actually wrap our form in the HTML form element. So you can do that in React anyway, and I'll show you real quick. So let's say instead of div here, we could have done form. And down here is form. And instead of having an on click on this save button, we can delete that. What we can do is on submit equals and will save. So this would have worked, except you'll see there is an issue in React in terms of how this actually works. So I don't have an on click here. The button would be a type of submit for this to work. Um, and now if I click handle save, okay, so I pulled this down just so you can see what happens, but keep an eye on the browser up here. So if I change name to Ian and then I click save, watch the browser bar up here. See, it's actually refreshed the page and it's passed as params the entire value of the form. So this is how HTML forms are designed to work, but it's not really how we use them in React. So often to get around this, instead of um, passing, you can see the website is here, the email is there and the name. Uh, to get around this, we always take the event and then we say event dot prevent default and we call that. So here instead, we'll go back to this, clear this, change this to Ian again, click save. Page doesn't reload because we've prevented the default uh, behavior of the form. And again, we got our values logged out because the page hasn't reloaded. We've just sent it up to the, to the function in the parent component. So I'll go back into React Hope Form documentation and I'll have a look down here. And you can see here we have the form component. Uh, so I'll go back into the code. And I have form and I have on submit equals handle save. Now we're going to need to use register to set up this form so that it can use React hook form. And I'm going to console log out register again so you can see exactly what register is. So we'll reload the page here and you can see, so you can see register is actually a function that takes a name and some optional options. So if I clear this and I'm going to start by saying register and I'll pass in name, because that's actually the name of the first input that we're going to be looking at. And so I'll invoke that by passing in name. 
and then see what we get here as we get name back. We also get these functions, so on blur, on change, and ref. So immediately you can see here now, well, what, what are we going to do? So instead of passing in an on change to all of these inputs, I'm going to delete these. I'm also going to delete value, and I'll leave name there for a second. And what I'm going to do is spread the result of register name. So I can delete that because, as you saw here, it already it's already passing a name. By us spreading the result of this uh, function being invoked, we're giving these um, keys, or we're giving these props to the input. So we're giving name, we're giving on blur, and we're giving on change and ref. So we don't need those. So I'm going to do the same here to email and. To website. Okay, so we now have this form with an on submit that takes handle save, but we need some way to communicate with React hook form when we press save, right? So use form returns a function called handle submit. What we want to give to handle submit is a function. So we're going to, instead of handle save here, we're going to call handle submit. Handle submit will do its React hook form thing. And then it will pass the result of that, which are the form values, to handle save. So we should still, instead of event here, and instead of user data, which is in state, we should get form values, which we can then pass through to our fake API function. And I'm going to comment out this uh, validation stuff for now. So if I save that, refresh, you can see we still don't have any initial data because we haven't set that up yet. But if I put my name in here, I click save, suddenly we have the form values that we've set up with React Hook form. So I can put in at marvel.com, a website, clear that, click save, and then we've got these three values, in at marvel.com, name, and website. So let's see what happens if we register country in here and we can get rid of value and on change right so if we select that we call in select a country scotland we've got an issue can't read properties of undefined reading name so if you remember handle select change up here takes the option uh, handle change takes an event so register is expecting this sort of format where it'll handle a normal on change. But if you're using a component like this react select select component, you're going to need a different way to handle on change. So we use something called controller from react hook form which allows us to you know have more control over the change event itself. So up here we're going to import use controller and we have control already here. So what we can then do is return an object which contains something called field from use controller. And that takes an object itself with a name value. And so we're going to try and control the country field. And then it also takes control. So control comes out of use form here. And this is how we link this controller with this use form instance. So we can then go down to the select here and we can say value equals field.value. I can delete this. On change is handle select change. And inside of handle select change, I can say field.on change. Pass in option.value. Get rid of this. So I know I'm getting options straight out of React Select, and then I just need to pass in the value into the on change. And let's see if that worked. So I'll change the country to Scotland here. And if I save it, you can see that uh, it's in the values, but it's not displaying properly here in the React Select. So if I go back to what I had there, country options dot find.
field.value. And there we go, Scotland. So we can now change it to USA, press save. Our form values now have country USA. So if I call Ian, Ian at marvel.com, change that to Asgard, call save. And then we have the entire form values coming out of React Hope form. So one thing we're missing here is validation. So all of this boilerplate for validation can go. This handle change can go because we don't need that anymore. And let's have a look at what sort of validation we were using here. We also don't need any of this because that's all stored in the use form form state. Errors can go, this state can go. Um, so what we need to do is, first of all, we need to pass in the initial values into the form. So I forgot about that. So use form takes an object with default values. Default values can take user, as long as the keys are all the same, name, email, website, country, you should see, now oh, errors is not defined, so I'm gonna comment all this out. And let's just say for, to get this working for now, errors equals empty object. So yeah, so you can now see the default values have gone straight into the form. So I've changed that to Thor, press save. It's returned all the values, including the one that I've just changed. So we'll close that. So to finish off, we're gonna take a look at validation. Um, so I'm gonna use a library called Zod for validation. Uh, React Hook Form does have its own validation. Uh, I find that using something like Yup or Zod is uh, way more powerful. Um, so for the purposes of this demo, we're gonna use Zod. So if you go down here to schema validation in the documentation, you can see here it says, we also support schema-based form validation with Yup, Zod, Superstruct, and Joy, uh, where you can pass your schema to use form with an optional config. So this example is using Yup. Um, we're not gonna use Yup in this example because it's not actually actively maintained as far as I can tell. Um, so I'm gonna use Zod instead, which I'll open here in a new uh, window. Uh, Zod is a really great, powerful library that um, is, as you can see, actively maintained. Um, so we'll, we'll sort of adapt the documentation here to, to work with Zod. So I need to install um, hook form resolvers. I'm gonna copy this and go to the terminal, close that, paste that in type in Zod instead. So while that's running, then we'll start the server again. And I should be able to import Zod resolver from hook form resolvers slash Zod. So we're gonna import uh, Z from Zod and then we're gonna create our schema. So say schema equals, and then we can say z.object, we're creating a schema, which is an object. If you have a look at the documentation here, you can see an example of creating an object schema. So we've got some strings. So we're gonna say name, string, and we're gonna say email, and that would be string.email. So that takes care of our email validation. We're gonna say, what else do we have? Uh, website. Nope. So we're going to say website string dot URL. And then we'll just say country, which is also a string. And uh, Zod does these validations as, as required by default. Um, if you wanted to say, you know, let's say website is optional, you can just add an optional um, function to the end of it just there. So the schema looks like this. And then what we do inside of use form is we need to give it a resolver and we will wrap our schema in the Zod resolver schema. And just before we finish that up, we will um, get form state out of use form and we can get rid of this and we can structure errors off of form state. That's not a function. And down here we are displaying errors in a div. Uh, instead of name, errors is an object with a message. Each one is a message. So if an error for a name exists, we do name. And if name exists, say name.message, 
why stop doing that please message you can say errors dot email dot oh my goodness well let's get rid of this and dot message I'll add my optional chaining in afterwards and we can also do the same for country Let's test that out. So we'll refresh the form here and we can delete a required form value. Click on save. And the first thing is invalid. It's invalidated the URL, which is interesting because that looks like a valid URL. Uh, yeah, I think it might be. Yeah, it's, it requires a HTTP. So um, URL on its own may not be good enough or you might want to encourage you might want to append the HTTP values, you know, in front of the actual website itself uh, before submitting the form. So that's something to be aware of. Um, the other thing is it's taking name as an empty string as a valid string. So, so what we can do to combat that is say, in, instead of allowing an empty string, we can uh, chain min, we'll just pass one in there. And let's try that again. So we'll delete this. And we will make sure that this is valid. Um, get rid of that. And you can see the validation is string must contain at least one character. So you can see that Zod and uh, React Hook Form have come up with a, a, a an actual error message. So you can customize that if you want. So inside of here, you can give it a second uh, second argument, and you can give it a message, and we can just say name is required. So we'll go there again, work around this for now, delete that, and we get name is required as a validation. Um, so that is, in a nutshell, how React Hook form works. That's how you would use a validation library like Zod. Um, I've just kind of scratched the surface here on how you could use these libraries. Uh, so I hope you can see the value in using them for your forms inside of your React apps instead of using the clunky default sort of React implementation for forms. But that's it for now. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel, and I will see you in the next video.